Welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Gartner and it's day one. Super excited to be with Simon Yor, who is the Global VP of Sales Engineering at K2View. Simon, welcome to the Robert Show. Thanks very much. Great to be on the show. Super I'm a big excited. Fan. Thank you very much. Super excited to be chatting with you today. I know we were talking off air uh, about a few things uh, that you all have been working in this space and what your customers are doing, what the enterprise leaders are talking. I'm pretty sure my audience would be super interested to learn more about that as well. But would you like to start with a quick intro? What do you do at K2View? Tell us more about uh, what are you listening here at Gartner from not only just the customers but also from the enterprise leaders out here? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so I run sales engineering for K2View, so yep. we're, we're hands-on keyboards, you know, yep. with uh, with our customers day in, day out. And uh, yeah, it's it's been actually really great to be here because there's definitely, uh, you know, I felt this last year, this kind of vibe of, of moving past experimentation. and it, But, you know, people are asking much better questions, I feel like, this year than even last year as they're getting yep. into the the nuts and bolts of what does it actually take yeah. to get this off the ground. There's a yeah. big focus around, you know, not just getting into production, but how do you scale? How do you deal with all of that? So, yeah, it's been uh, it's been really good. There's lots of energy here. That's fantastic to know. You know, obviously, better questions. Uh, Jenny is kind of getting a little mature as well. Things are kind of getting real. I was talking to Ron and obviously he mentioned a lot of those things. I'm kind of curious to learn from you, what are some of the critical requirements to use enterprise data as part of a Gen AI project? Uh, what do you think about that? Because I know you are working with a lot of enterprise out there. That's it. I mean, we have a lot of these conversations and, I, and, and actually for me, what I've found, it always comes down to the use case, use case. right? Because Absolutely. you think, I mean, people, when they get into this more and more and more in detail and find like the questions that you ask are kind of the driver of the use case, right? Whether it's an agent or it's a conversational uh, kind of front end that you're putting up, yeah. the kind of questions that you're asking is really what drives the data that you actually need, right? Mm. Um, and you know, I think what we're finding is teams are getting more and more clarity on the fact that the systems that they've had in place to answer some of the analytical questions mm. and things like that, is it's a very different ball game when you're trying to support a real-time customer conversation and somebody's saying like, can I change my flight? Uh, like, where's my stuff? Where's my order? Like, those are very different questions. Mm. And so for us, it's really about making sure that you understand the kind of interactions that that agent is going to have. Very important. Right? And, and a lot of times it breaks down into, you know, differences between knowledge-based articles versus like real-time transactional data that's going to come. And the thing that we're finding is a lot of these systems, they, they're obviously, I mean, mainframe was not built for the AI era, right? Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. now being thrust into a place where maybe that's the place that that data sits. Yeah. You've got to be able to get access to it. So, yeah. I mean, we hear about the common stuff like quality and you've got to make sure. Exactly. It really comes down to accuracy hmm. and the, so the freshness of the data, the accuracy, and can you deliver that at conversational speed? Yeah, um, I think, you know, and fantastic insights that you've kind of shared. You mentioned a little about, you know, um, also the freshness, like you said, uh, the accuracy of the data. It also depends a lot, uh, like when we, when we are, you know, talking about Gen AI, a lot of things like data privacy kind of comes into the game, data governance kind of comes into the game. How are you looking at that? How are you kind of solving that for your customers? That's a great question, because I think uh, it's often really overlooked. I mean, you see some of the really big uh, headlines, unfortunately. Uh, it's very clear that LLMs introduce a new attack vector. Mm. Um, and so you've got to really think about that all the way through the stack. Very right? important. I mean, when you're connecting uh, an LLM with all of your customer data or even part of it, mm. you don't want to be in a situation where, you know, the person just asks the right kind of question and they can get access to data even about other members of their family. Like, I mean, you can. Yeah. So it does introduce a lot of uh, a potential risk. For us, it's all about creating very well-defined silos of data, not silos in the traditional sense, because we've been trying to get past that for years. Yeah. I'm talking about you know segmenting, segmenting so that you don't end up with this risk of just asking the right question and then you can get access to all this data. Mm. So we're looking at, I mean, teams we're talking to are really asking us about how do we actually do dynamic data masking all the way through the stack? Yep. How do we segment the data so that only the data that's relevant to that conversation is held in memory, right? Yeah. These are really, really important um, 
techniques that are being uh, really put into to place now to prevent these major risks. Hundred percent, and I think the size of companies that y'all are working with have like large, huge data. So you all need to be super careful when it comes to you know even those the customers that the, your customers have need to have right data, right information that's kind of going through as well, and making sure that the it's properly governed and the security is in place. No one wants to be a headline, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants so that. So true, so true. One more quick question. So in terms of, you know, obviously scaling projects, that that's one thing that is uh, also uh, the talk of the town. How do you kind of do that? Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of customers of y'all, uh, of KW kind of, you know, kind of also are focused on the ROI. And that is like the first question when you kind of, you know, obviously get into the, the environment. They, when they, and they, if they want to scale, what are the ROI we're going to see with the scaling? So how does that work? Can you tell us a little about that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the scaling piece of this, as again, I said before about we're moving to this more mm. uh, production class deployments, we started really looking into what are the major reasons that these applications don't necessarily get into production. And sometimes it can be that there was not clear enough ROI, but also if you think about the getting access to that on-premise, that, that legacy, that um, even mainframe data, like it's all locked up into these enterprise systems. Mm. Getting access to that data is, uh, it can be costly. Yep. And so if you haven't really thought about how you're going to unlock that data at scale, that's one piece of it. So you've got to get a lot of clarity on where is that data and understanding the questions, for example, that yeah. you're going to be asked. But then the other one is that uh, these these um, applications that they go into production sometimes fall down on the inference cost. If what happens if it's really popular and all of a sudden you've got a million queries in oh a month? Oh my god! You yeah. know, yeah, that's a golden problem to have. Yeah. But it's one that you've got to think through, right? And so a lot of that comes down on a technical level to having the data that you need for repeated questions in memory. Mm. So you're not going back to the relational systems, you're not going back and doing the full inference cost every single time and yep. pulling that data. So using techniques like that, it actually can bring down the cost a Very lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you, you've got to know what that business case is. And we, case. we are seeing some progress on that front, I think. Um, there's been some really great success stories that we've seen where, um, you know, that the, the, the amount of, uh, uh, the amount of uh, workload that these, yep. Uh, agents can handle at scale is, is pretty impressive. So. It's something which is, you know, exactly what I hear from a lot of enterprise leaders that we are looking at that problem to be solved in terms of scaling. The ROI kind of also goes higher and this is exactly what you all are focusing on, so which is fantastic. Uh, and that is what I wanted to learn more about. Uh, so thanks for Definitely. that. Uh, quick one, Simon, uh, what's next? What's coming up? Any advice that you have for the enterprise leaders out there who are looking to obviously implement uh, Gen AI into their game or want to scale the game, uh, any advice for them? Well, I think the key is to understand where is the data going to come from, right? Very important. And how, how are you yeah. going to make sure that you're protecting your production systems from being queried day in, day out yeah. by a successful agent deployment? I, it's great to have those use cases, but uh, I think often that that piece of it gets overlooked. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, this is an exciting time to be yeah. in this industry. Um, yeah. I think we're seeing more and more ROI, more and more use cases that we're seeing. And yes. uh, yeah, it's uh, exciting it's a great time. for sure. Yeah. Uh, one last question for you. If folks want to reach out to you, learn more about uh, different things that you're doing, where can they do that? LinkedIn, X, which is the best place? Uh, definitely LinkedIn. Uh, KTV is pretty active on LinkedIn. I, awesome. I know I, I am as well, and, and Ronan is. So uh, definitely reach out. And uh, yeah, we'd love to get, uh, get chatting. Awesome. Thank you very much, Simon. This is uh, such a great conversation. And uh, we'll keep the conversation going by, and have the rest of the two days have fun at Gartner. Great. Yeah, thanks again for having me on the show. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you, everyone.